In this series of videos, we're going to talk about activity-based costing. In the first video, we'll go over some of the concepts behind activity-based costing. In the second and third videos, we're going to walk through a pretty comprehensive example of activity-based costing. But let's get started with just what is activity-based costing. So we know up to this point that the cost of any product is the cost of the material, the labor, and the overhead. And we, when we add all those costs together, those categories of costs, we get the total cost of our product. And we also know that the material and the labor are the easy part. Overhead seems to be the tricky part. And in our previous couple series of videos, we've gone through job order costing and process costing as a way of costing our products and specifically of dealing with the overhead cost. And the way we've established to deal with the overhead cost is by using something called the predetermined overhead rate to estimate our overhead. So let me just take a step back. We all know that the materials cost, if I'm thinking about making a, a hamburger, the materials cost is the cost of the meat in the burger and the cost of the bun. I also know labor cost is the wages of the person who prepared the burger. It's just the wages cost. The overhead costs of making a burger are all of those indirect factory costs, indirect costs of making the burger. So things like uh, utilities. The utilities bill, the cost of heating up the grill, the cost of turning the lights on, that's an indirect cost. It's hard to say how much of that cost went into the burger. Uh, other costs like rent on my kitchen or my factory, the rent on the place where I uh, make the burger. That is also an overhead cost. Other types of overhead cost, if I take time setting up or cleaning up, uh, those costs, the, the cost of the wages of the people where they're setting up, cost of the supplies to set up and clean up, I'll just call those setup costs, those are all overhead costs. Uh, indirect materials and indirect labor are both types of overhead costs. And so what we found was, okay, when I make that burger, the second I make it, I know what the meat costs, I know what the bun costs, because I bought the meat and I bought the bun at the store. I can figure out, okay, how much meat went into it and how much bun went into it. So I'm gonna know immediately my actual, pardon me, my actual materials cost. I'm also gonna immediately know my actual labor cost. What I won't know immediately is my actual overhead cost. I don't know what my utilities bill was for the month when I'm making the burger. I don't get the utilities bill till the end of the month. So the second I make the burger, I don't know my utilities cost and how much utilities went into the burger. I don't know how many burgers I made, so I don't know how much rent should go into one burger. It might depend on how many burgers I make in the month. I don't know my total setup cost for the month and how much should be applied to that one burger. So with MOH, we said we have to estimate our MOH. And actually, we used a term for the estimate. We said we have to apply our MOH. So we use our actual materials, our actual labor, but we apply our overhead. We estimate our overhead. And the way we estimate it is we total up all of our overhead. We total our estimated overhead and we divide by an estimated overhead driver. And we said those are things that tend to drive over it and common examples are direct labor hours direct labor cost machine hours and there's lots and lots of others but those are common examples so I would say okay I'm gonna total up all these overheads I'm gonna estimate it I'm gonna estimate my MOH driver and then I'm gonna apply it to the given hamburger so if I use direct labor hours and it took me 15 minutes to make a burger I would use uh, that to, to drive my overhead cost. And I've got nice examples in the job order costing video of just how exactly this works. Now, what activity-based costing says is it looks at these overheads. It says, look, utilities, rent, setup costs, indirect materials, indirect labor, and it goes, there's lots of different types of overhead a company can have. Does it really make sense to use only one driver? Because that's what a traditional costing method is going to do. It's going to say, okay, I'm going to use direct labor hours. Uh, Activity-based costing says, well, I should break these up into activities and decide different drivers for different types of overhead. 
So maybe utilities, I might say utilities are driven by, uh, for example, machine hours. You know, the more I use my machine, the more um, uh, utilities cost I'm gonna have. Rent might be driven by square footage or something else. Uh, setup costs, well, number of setups, obviously the more times I set up. Uh, indirect labor might be by direct labor hours. You know, the more direct labor I have, the more indirect labor I have. Anyway, you get the idea that maybe I should use a different driver for each type of overhead. And that's what activity-based costing says. It says break your overhead into different pools and use different drivers for each of those pools. So rather than using one overhead rate, activity-based costing says we're going to use many overhead rates. And what you're going to find with this is there's a lot of advantages, but the biggest single advantage is it can potentially be more accurate. You know, you're using if you're using direct labor hours to predict your utilities cost, probably there's not a one to one ratio. So you might find better drivers create better overhead rates and that may, makes for a more accurate uh, costing system and that's really the number one pro. The number one con here, I guess I've said pros and cons, I'm only giving one of each. The number one con of an activity based costing system, because you'll see it in, in your class and you'll work through problems on activity based costing, the big con of it is it's way, 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 oh dear my penning is gone to heck here, uh, it's way more expensive. It's not even close. Uh, and, and so what happens is companies that implement these costing systems, rather than just gathering direct labor hours or one driver, they end up gathering 5, 10, 20 drivers, and they're gathering way more data, and the cost of actually getting that data can be too expensive that it's not even worth it. So the pro is that it's more accurate. But most companies use this traditional one overhead rate method. Uh, not a lot of companies use activity-based costing because they find the con of it being more expensive outweighs the pros of more accuracy, or at least arguably more accuracy. Um, so, in any event, in the next video, we're going to work through an example of how to do activity-based costing, and I think as we work through it, you're going to get a better feeling for what activity-based costing is, and we'll compare it to a more traditional costing method. That's it for this one. Stay tuned for the next video.